Hello, I'm JW, and a fairly short video here, but what I've got here is one of these uh, transformers, or uh, more accurately, they're just a uh, switch mode power supply, and uh, they're used for these uh, halogen down lighters in the ceiling. Basically, it's one per uh, lamp or light fitting, and it's uh, main voltage in there, sort of 240 volts, and then you get uh, 12 volts AC on the other two wires. And uh, these were quite common at one time, although, of course, nowadays they're being replaced with the LED version. And as you can probably see on this one, it's uh, melted there somewhat on the side. And of course it doesn't work anymore, hence the reason for taking it out and uh, replacing it. So I thought we'd we'll just have a look inside and see uh, what's actually failed in there. And also uh, a quick look as to how well or otherwise it's actually constructed. So here's the device, and as you can see it mains in 240 volts. And uh, output is uh, what, 12 volts, or 11.6 volts actually. And uh, these are generally AC output at a fairly high frequency. So it's only a uh, halogen or tungsten filament lamp on the end, so it doesn't actually matter whether it's uh, AC or DC. And uh, this is actually rated for 60 uh, VA, so uh, these are designed for use with a single 50 watt halogen downlighter, uh, current 4.9 amps. And uh, this particular one, uh, as you see, is melted uh, rather considerably on both the side and the top there. Uh, Date-wise, this is from uh, September 2010, so. Uh, just under five years ago. So it's been in for quite a while and obviously uh, working all well until just recently. So uh, let's see if we can just pry this open and let's see what we can find inside. Now of course these are generally uh, sealed devices, not generally intended to be opened, so uh, maybe some difficulty in uh, extracting the thing apart. Right, so I've uh, got that open reasonably easily. It was actually glued uh, along the sides, which is uh, pretty much what you would expect. So we can see here that there's a considerable amount of blackening and charring on the underside of this cover, although it didn't actually come through, just a bit of softening of the plastic at the edge there. That sort of fitted over that. And uh, this is the actual uh, board itself. So uh, as you can see, uh, pretty evident where the failure was. So the whole of that inside is uh, totally charred and uh, blackened in there. And it's got this moulding on the uh, plastic here, which of course fitted through a slot in the uh, circuit board there. And again, you've got those other two pieces, which again fit through those for, that's just for separation between the mains input and the uh, 12 volt output. So it just uh, sort of slots together in there. So uh, that's reasonable. So uh, let's just have a, a bit closer and see what actually destroyed itself. So here's a closer view of the actual circuit board, and we've got the uh, mains coming in here on the uh, blue and brown wires. So the failure has occurred on the main side, of course being the 12 volt side, hence that's why they've got that slot there with that uh, plastic piece going through, and also got these uh, cutouts here to separate the uh, two sides. So I've uh, got a uh, just a capacitor there on the uh, input there, so though it's a bit uh, blackened, that's obviously not the cause of the failure. And the uh, fairly here appears to be this uh, component here, which uh, of course is just on those two pads at the bottom. And as you can see, it's uh, totally and utterly destroyed. It's probably, or probably was, a uh, resistor of some kind. It's uh, fairly common to actually have what are actually low uh, rating resistors in these types of things, and they're designed to fail uh, if they're a particular kind of resistor to act as a sort of a fuse in that fashion. And that seems to be exactly what it's done here. So see it's uh, grossly overheated and uh, detached from the actual circuit board. And of course it's charred the actual board material here. And obviously the two components adjacent. This one here looks like another capacitor there. Can't really see any markings, but uh, yeah, pretty likely going to be a, a capacitor there with the two uh, connections there. So that's, although uh, the end is damaged, that's not uh, the actual thing that failed. And then uh, here we look, it looks like an inductor. Yeah, with just the uh, two pins going through to the track has actually uh, lifted on the actual material of the circuit board there. So uh, there's the cause of the failure. And it was probably caused by uh, some other component uh, shorting or going short circuit and the current draw therefore being far greater than it should have been. And of course that's why the uh, Thing is overheated and melted. Uh, this end looks fine actually, we've got no uh, obvious failures there. And 
Yeah, I've just got those two uh, semiconductor devices at the top there. Yeah, both identical. A few diodes and resistors underneath, and let's say all of this looks uh, so far. This uh, is not the actual cause of the failure. And this here is presumably some sort of, uh, of that device there. Let's just get another ID on that one. So I'd imagine it's some kind of thermal uh, overload or cutout or something, given its position here, and you've got this sort of sleeving, sort of heat resistant uh, sleeve over it. As I say, it's only got a two pin uh, connection, so presumably some kind of thermal fuse or something in the event of the. Uh, semiconductors overheating, because that would then uh, disconnect and uh, switch the thing off, but yeah, it's about 130 uh, degrees centigrade and 2 amps, 250 volts, so uh, say a thermal uh, fuse of some kind, I would imagine. And the rest of it is fairly ordinary, just a uh, little capacitor there, a little uh, miniature coil on a uh, base there, and of course you've got your main uh, coil there with the uh, primary and secondary one over the other and of course that's what comes across to your output over here so uh, there's not any particular smoothing on the output it's basically just from the uh, whatever frequency this runs at the uh, red winding there just coming across and uh, basically going directly to the output and uh, not a whole lot in these but say the fact it's just driving a uh, halogen lamp effectively it doesn't actually matter whether it's uh, DC or whatever or AC because of course uh, at the frequency this runs at it's not going to have any visible flicker or anything. So uh, yeah there's the uh, failure there and although it looks pretty uh, catastrophic and a uh, horrible mess and uh, here's the uh, cover inside it's basically done what it was designed to do which is uh, to fail here and then just disconnect the actual uh, circuit there and of course uh, prevent the whole thing from uh, setting on fire and uh, combusting. And so you've got the wire, this white uh, flat lead coming in. That's your two uh, connections there. So your line basically is coming in here. And then of course the link is then provided by this component here, which of course would have gone between this pad and the next one. And therefore, say, so literally acting as a sort of a fuse in this particular case. And then the capacitors will be uh, connected across mainly for uh, suppression of any interference or at least some of it and that's all the uh, basically the oscillator and the uh, things at that end all of which drives the secondary coil on the inside and then of course the outside uh, is just taken off to the uh, 12 volt output. So that's the uh, failed uh, lighting transformer or uh, so it's not really a transformer it's uh, more of a switch mode power supply but nevertheless does the same job just changes the uh, mains coming into a 12 volt AC output and also note that the output is actually isolated from the uh, incoming uh, main so uh, also that degree of uh, added safety there and the uh, lid does actually uh, say that there just uh, put that the right way up so it says SELV there so uh, yeah separated uh, extra low voltage and so though it looks quite bad there with this uh, failed component it's basically uh, done what it was supposed to do which is to uh, fail here and therefore uh, disconnect the thing before uh, the actual whole thing sets on fire and uh, causes a major problem. So uh, not uh, too bad I suppose, I mean it's a fairly typical sort of construction inside. So these things were very common until uh, fairly recently, and basically it's one of these per halogen down lighter, so we've got sort of 20 of those in the room, then it's uh, 20 of these in the ceiling to go with it, but of course with the advent of LEDs and the light these are becoming somewhat less common now. And uh, prior to these things uh, being very cheaply made, it was the case that uh, if you had, say, 20 down lighters, you would have a large, uh, usually toroidal, wire wound transformer, which was extremely heavy and also extremely expensive. And then you'd have to use, uh, obviously, wiring from that to the uh, 20 or how many down lighters you had. And uh, that really fell out of favour because the transformers were very expensive and they were extremely heavy. And, of course, they had to be fitted uh, separately from the actual lights you uh, these can actually be fitted through the hole where the down lights go. And obviously a massive uh, 10 kilogram uh, toroidal transformer is not going to fit through a hole in the ceiling and uh, even if it did you wouldn't want it sitting on the back of the ceiling unsupported. And uh, so those are fine but the only advantage to those is the, uh, because the wires will carry a substantial current, you're talking sort of maybe four and a half amps per down lighter, it uh, unfortunately meant that the uh, wires between the transformer and the light had to be in many cases gigantic. 
but uh, of course that's why uh, these were more favourable because I say only one lamp and you've only got basically that length of wire between the uh, device and the lamp on the end of it. So until next time, thanks for watching.